So we all know auto captions was one of the most requested features in DaVinci Resolve, and they finally did it and they are surprisingly accurate. So we're gonna take a look at some of the new Beta 3 updates in this video. Now, the auto transcription features are only available with the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, but if you're using the free version of Resolve, don't worry, there's still gonna be a lot of tips in this video. We're gonna talk about how to customize your subtitles in creative ways and things like that. So let's go ahead and take a look inside DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so let's start off by looking at some of the transcription features. So once you've imported some footage into your project, you can simply select it in your media pool and then click this transcribe audio button right up here. And this will just analyze the audio and give you a nice little transcription right here. Now you can see this little carrot that symbolizes the word that we're currently on. Now the auto transcription features are only available with this. Now there's a few things we can do straight from the transcription window here. You can delete certain parts of the transcript and you can see when we select the text to insert into our timeline, you can see that it made this little edit here based on the edit we made to the transcript. You can also search for specific keywords. And what I think is kind of cool is you can actually transcribe multiple clips at the same time. So let's say you're working on a documentary or a wedding film and you want to kind of hunt down a specific phrase or somebody mentioning a name or something. You can see when you select multiple clips to transcribe, we get this clips window right up here. And of course this would have multiple if I had selected more than two. And what's cool is I can just search for, I know I said the word resolve, and there you can see it found eight results, four in this clip and four in this clip. So that could be a really great way to kind of go through a ton of footage to find a specific talking point for your edit. And let me actually show you what this looks like on uh, this live concert footage. And so here you go, here's the whole transcript of this live show that I was at. This would have been really helpful. I actually edited a music video based on a bunch of live footage and this would have let me quickly go through and find the lyrics to the song so I can match it up with the actual album recording. So that would have been really helpful. Now you can see there's quite a bit of these silent sections here indicated by the three dots in parentheses. And if I click on the three dots up here, I can actually remove those silent portions. And from here, I can actually select all of the text and just insert it into a timeline. And you'll see it will remove all of those silent portions. So again, this could be really, really useful for like interviews, podcasts, you know, things like that. So that's just like a quick overview of transcribing on the clip level. We could also transcribe an entire timeline. So to do that, you just click on the timeline in the media pool and then transcribe the audio. This will analyze the edited timeline. So even if you had multiple tracks with dialogue, this will transcribe that entire edit. And from here, we could still use that same trick and search for a keyword and then highlight that area. And you can see it marks these in and out points so I can quickly navigate to a specific part. Maybe if you're doing like a long form interview and you remember what they were talking about and you wanna go pull out a social media clip or something, this is a really easy way to navigate inside your timeline. Now keep in mind, any edits that you make to the transcript will not appear inside of the timeline. They will only appear when you bring that timeline into another timeline. So it's just like if you were to make an edit to the transcript of a clip, it doesn't physically cut that clip until you drag it into a timeline. So just wanted to point that out. Now let's move on to the auto captioning subtitle features. So it's real simple to create captions. All you have to do is come up here to timeline and click on create subtitles from audio. And this will ask you what language you want to create those subtitles for. Right now there are 14. I'm gonna leave mine at auto. And you can also select certain presets depending on where you are delivering. You can also choose the maximum characters per line. So if you want really big, blocky, kind of YouTube style captions, you might wanna go for something smaller like this. Uh, let's keep it on this for now. We can always come back and change this. And you can also do single line or double line. I'm gonna choose single, and we could have a gap between our subtitles if we want. I'm gonna just leave it at zero, and let's go ahead and hit create. And this will analyze the audio, and then it'll give you this subtitle track up here. So let's kind of make a little bit more room so we could see this a bit better. Now if we play through it, you can see. We all know auto captions was one of the most requested features in DaVinci. And yeah, it works pretty well. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple ways we can customize our captions. Now, everything going forward will be the same, whether you're in the free or the studio version of Resolve, or even if you're in an older, you know, non-beta version of DaVinci Resolve, the subtitle customization has been in Resolve 
for a while now. So you can click on the actual subtitle track or an individual caption like this. And over in your inspector, you'll see you have caption and track. So caption is where you can go through and adjust the individual captions that were created. And you can edit the subtitles in this box here. You can also click next and kind of cycle through each of the captions. So that's pretty much what the caption panel is here for. Now, if you move over to track, this is where you can sort of customize the font and maybe we'll choose something a little bit more uh, bold for this style of video. And I'm just going to choose maybe some kind of a yellow like this. And let's kind of scrub through and see if we like that color. I think it works well enough. And of course we can reposition the subtitles. We could add a little drop shadow if we wanted to, and also a background. So the background's kind of cool. These will automatically change in size depending on how long the caption is. If you override the sizing here, then you can manually choose the size of that box. And when you do this, it will stay the same size no matter what. And when you're editing something more serious, like a documentary or a film, then you of course wanna choose some kind of font that matches the feeling of that style. And speaking of documentaries, it's really common to use lower thirds and other type of graphics down here in this lower area like this one. And you obviously don't want them to compete with your subtitles. So what are you supposed to do in that case? Yeah, so rather than customizing each individual caption, you know, cause that could be very tedious, especially if you have to do this very often in an edit, what you could do instead is right click on the subtitle and select add subtitle region. And what this does is it gives you a second region up here where you can actually slide the subtitle right up to the next region. And you can have completely different parameters for this region. So if I go back over to track, let me just quickly set up that same font and just move it up slightly like this. Now it's really easy to simply go through my timeline and anytime I have some graphics on screen, I can simply drag all of those subtitles up to the additional region and all of them will take on those new track settings. And you can have up to four subtitle regions. So you could have maybe an italics region or you could assign different colors for like maybe different speakers, you know, just tons of different ways to use these subtitle regions. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit about exporting your subtitles. So I'm over here on the deliver page and over in the render settings under the video tab, you should see a subtitle settings drop down menu right here. Now, whenever you have the export subtitle checkbox selected, you have a few different options for how the render handles your subtitles. Now, whenever this is set to embedded or using a separate file, then whatever media player or streaming service that you upload to, it won't really care about all the customization with the formatting that you applied. It'll just kind of format it the way it wants to. So more than likely, you're gonna to want to burn into video if you physically want these subtitles to be a part of your render. Now, if you are using the free version of DaVinci Resolve and you're gonna be typing out your graphics anyway, and you want them to show up in your final video, I do wanna remind you that we do have a lot of these subtitle presets, like this one here from M Music Video 2. And when you're editing something more serious, like a documentary or a film. And this one here from M Keynote. Speaking of documentaries, it's really common to use lower thirds and other type of graphics. Now you do have to type all of these in manually using the text controls over here in the inspector. But if you're gonna be doing that anyway with the subtitle track, then you might as well make them look fancy. And so you can use one of our subtitle presets available on our website. All right, well that was just a quick overview on the new transcription and subtitle features. I really think this is gonna speed up a lot of editors' workflows, especially for searching for a specific word or using the transcript to build out a rough edit. And of course the auto subtitles works great and it shows that Blackmagic is listening to their users and delivering meaningful updates. So I'm really excited to see where DaVinci Resolve goes from here. Let us know in the comments what you hope to see in a future update and be sure to subscribe to the channel. We've got a whole lot more videos planned out. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.